<laughs> old man noises when I'm standing up. Yep, same. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting really good at old man noises. <laughs> How are you? Oh, I'm all right, mate. Good. <laughs> Excellent. Nice to see you. Welcome back to Project PP Mulgari Cars, my yes. mate. Daz the Magician. I noticed you've got yeah. a name badge on there now. Tagged up now. I yeah. didn't make this. This was made for me. <laughs> this is the one I'm allowed to wear because there's no expletives on it. Now then, it's been a while. It has. much has happened. Yeah, lots of background stuff has happened. All the stuff you can't really see. Yeah. Um, so if you haven't been following this series so far, I'll put a link to the playlist. I suggest you go back and watch the first one. Yes. And, and, and we'll go back to basically we are building the coolest R52 Mini Cooper S. We're certainly trying. There's ever been. Yeah. Basically. What he said. Yeah. <laughs> With the slight caveat that the engine has had a little bit of... Um, uh, water ingress and a bit of damage. It was poorly. It was very it's poorly. It's less poorly now. Yes. So in the last video, um, we, we ended up finishing that video looking at the subframe and putting all the PowerFlex bushes or yes. talking about PowerFlex bushes. That is now finished. That is and done and in the car. In the car. Yeah. All, all cleaned pretty, up. pretty, shiny with all the good bits on it. All lovely. Yeah. The other thing, the engine bay, you've tidied all of that up. Yeah, it's had a bit of a wipe down and a tidy up and a clean, ready to accept a, a rebuilt engine, which is soon to be back in there. Which is here. It is here, yeah. So can we, can we, should, can we wheel it in a bit? Is it? Yeah, is it, oh, wheel it fairly no. easy. Yeah, baby. So. There we are. Can it's I half like an engine. I go? Yeah, go on, big reveal. Tiny bit. Wow. That <laughs> looks quite different. Yeah, it's not as rusty and crusty so as we'll, we'll put that uh, as on it to was. stop the dust The debris, yeah. yeah. So. Talk to us about the engine. So one of the things, uh, a few people commented uh, after the last video that we didn't show any pictures of the internals. The mess, yes. The mess. There are some. Yes. I believe you have them. Let, I'll overlay them as we're talking. We shall include them this time. Yes, but even better than that. We've got some busted Bear with me, ones. caller. There's, a, there's an old piston. There we yeah. go. That's probably one of the better ones as well. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's that. Oh, yeah, the no, rings this one's, move on the rings one. actually move on this one. Let me go and get on yeah. with the older ones, look. The one where it's all locked in and seized up and... Mm. Yeah. Mm, yummy. Not good. Not no. good at all. So, no. pistons, we're not using those. No, no, we're, we'll, we'll keep those for John as a mantelpiece item. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there'd been a lot of water in there, which consequently, as you can see by the state of the pistons, had also seen some pitting in the bores yep. where the piston sits so the concern was how far has that pitting gone do we need to go so far out that we'd have to consider lining it because john wanted to keep our original block yep it didn't have to go that far out as it happened it's, it's cleaned relatively well so i think we've gone plus 15 thou ish okay it's not a great deal um all the surfaces have been decked and cleaned it's been ultrasonically cleaned and dipped and acid and just about everything else Rehoned, so we've now got a nice set of Wassner forged pistons in there uh, with their associated rings. We've used the original con rods, mm -hmm. but they've been weight matched, so yep. they all weigh exactly the same, which is part of your harmonic balancing process. Crank yep. shaft has also been ground and balanced, so there was no huge heavy pitting in the crankshaft or its bearings. They're quite heavily worn, as you could see, yep. um, especially considering the low miles, but it hadn't picked anything up. And Dug, so we've just ground it and gone very marginally oversized on the bearings with race bearings in it as well because yep. it's an opportunity to do so while we're there. So, I mean, really bottom end wise, that's it. We haven't gone anything silly. It's just nicely balanced. We haven't lightened anything particularly because there's not much to lighten in there in truth. And being an auto transmission car, the drive plate on the back is a fraction of the weight of a conventional flywheel for a manual. Yep. Um, heads all been overhauled in the same way. So similarly to our rough pistons the valves have had the same kind of corrosion around the seats and the stems and stuff so they've all gone in the bin we've got fresh valves fresh valve seats which are they're already hardened but we've done three angle seats which just improve flow slightly new guides new stem seals uh our original valve springs and caps and collets because i don't need to change those yeah and that's again all been ultrasonically cleaned it's all been decked flat nicely so yeah it's all here now i just need to click it together it sounds ever so easy it does and uh, it would have been nice to be able to capture that assembly on Some camera it. however we are both 
so Mega horrifically busy. busy. Just getting together is a task in its own it right, let be, alone timing yeah. that while you're actually <laughs> building the... So Darren's just been having to build it whenever he's got time. Yeah, so, we've got five minutes. So unfortunately, yeah. it's built. Um, now, the head is just over there. I'll put some overlay. Um, yeah. So I guess next thing is engine in. Pretty much once all of these pieces are together, the transmission we've opened up, serviced it, we changed some seals and bits and pieces because again, it, it, it wasn't in the same state as this, but it had obviously been sat for a while and things get a bit dried out and horrible. So we've just gone through it as a sort of serviceability. It will have a better oil and stuff in it when we, when we go back together. So we know it will be at its peak performance to run the power we're using. Yeah. They'll be mated together once it's all pieced up and we'll drop that back into the front here where it lives, it's about here somewhere, yeah, somewhere. hopefully. That, that way around. Yes, yeah, well we could do it the other way around, there's a lot more work. Yeah, I was gonna say we could do longitudinal, longitudinal mini, that'd be a first. It, Bearing in mind- It would, it would be cool, know, but- The mini was famous for being transverse it, and- Correct, there wouldn't be much room for that. passengers in there. No, not um, really. Yes, well that, the next stage, once this is all pieced together, is it will be hung back in there and we'll wire and plumb it and kind of get it ready. There's lots of other peripheral bits that we've still got a little bit of work to do on, but that it will happen as it goes back together. It, it is amazing and I know you kind of do this all the time, just how many bits, when you start taking things apart, oh, how many things so many pieces. we need to think about. I mean, it always amazes <coughs> me that you remember to put everything back in, to be honest. <laughs> but it, sometimes, despite, I mean, I do a lot of these, I do a lot of the Gen 2, Gen 3 cars, there's always something that you go, how does that go? So I still now, particularly when I know something's going to be long-winded, I still use whiteboards, I still use notepads, I still use modern day camera phone and document some of it. There are, you know, some of these have slightly different configurations where the wiring routing is or the pipe routing is. So, you know, if you're doing DIY stuff at home and you're not entirely sure of the process, hmm. every step, take a photograph. And then yeah. just when you go back through it, just do it in reverse. And it's, it's an easy way to remember. But yeah. there, are, there are so many pieces when you get into doing engines and transmissions particularly. Because just even looking at this now, obviously there's a gate for every hole. There's like loads of wiring harnesses and, and connectors and Bits hoses. Of pipe work and You're saying about the hoses? Just cover those. Yeah, as well? so cooling system wise, <clears throat> again, down the route of our future proofing, there's not a massive amount wrong with the coolant hoses that were on there. They are obviously as old as the car, they do deteriorate because they're rubber. Um, and particularly, although we didn't have a huge amount of this, when you get oil and water mixed in a cooling system, the oil eats the hoses from the inside and they go soft. Mm. So because it's an opportunity where we can get to everything, it will have a full set of silicon hoses, partly because they're a bit more robust, but also future proof wise, they're just better and more resilient pieces. Cool. I'd rather do as much as we can whilst we're there. Yeah. Um, because we've got the access to it. Effectively, what we're trying to do is give John back a virtually brand fire new car, mechanically yeah. at least. Yeah. Um, it's, so it's future proofing. Cool. So that's engine covered. It is. Next thing I want to talk about is wheels and tyres. Oh, yes. Well, we, we previewed the wheels, didn't we? We have. Because they're mustard. Should we go over this way? Should we go and have a look at them down there? Yeah. Let's do it. Because they're very nice. <laughs> There we are. Oh yeah. Pretty pretty. So, uh, last video we showed you the wheels and I am mildly in love with the wheels. Uh, we now have some proper rubber on them thanks yes, to do. my very good friends at Michelin UK. Indeed. Uh, they are shod with a set of Michelin Pilot Sport 5s. They are. I think this is a tyre with the best looking sidewall of, <laughs> of any tyre on the market. It's got this a pretty cool look, look isn't it? It's lovely, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's smart. So Very tell amazing. us a little bit about wheel set, tire size, profile choice. So we didn't change the diameter yeah. because I don't think they need to be any bigger on this model, to be honest. Yeah. And given that we're going for kind of a faster street style car more than a show car and a track car, yeah. I didn't, the bigger you go, the less sidewall really you have to run to fit them under here. Mm. And with the lower sidewall, you end up with a crashier ride. Yes, it's more pointy, more positive, if you will. But combined with that, we've also got reasonably firm suspension set up to a degree, so we can find... Fitted by, well, one of them. Yeah, yeah, legend. <laughs> <laughs> so we can find some ride quality back by having a reasonable profile. So what we really did is come wider. So we've changed the offset slightly, partially to clear our calipers, partially to get them out level with the body line, which I think just looks better. Yeah. 
so to cover that off, see for every width profile, there's three dimensions you're interested in really. It's your diameter, of course. 17 inch. Correct. And then you have, if we look at the numbers, just so people can see yep. them. So 215.45.17 is what we've elected to go for on here. Your 215 denotes the width. In millimetres? Yes. Which is weird, because the radius is in inches. Oh no, don't. It's done. Yeah, okay. We could go to full metric as well. Yeah. Let's not do that, because that's complicated. Yeah. Um, and your 45 is your profile here, from the outside circumference to the tread top. And that's a percentage of the width. Correct. So it's not quite as simple as just going, I want that and that, because we're also mindful of the rolling radius being very close to the original set. Yeah because we've gone wider, we've had to go wider with our tire, otherwise they stretch and they look a bit funny. And I quite like the, the quite square sidewall rather than overly stretched. So you have to then take note of your profile going up and up and up and up and up. You know, yeah. if you went with a 50, which is even taller, the percentage of difference between the originals and these is so great, the speedo will be out by enough to cause you a problem. Yeah. So whilst, yes, we've gone wider and we've gone taller, Percentage wise, we're within 5% of what the original rolling radius would have been. So we're not going to be a million miles out on your speedo. And that's why you have percentage run out allowed yep. for you know, you know, your national speed limit and so on. Yep. Um, I think there were two schools of thought here. We needed the width, yes. We could have gone down as low as 40, but I don't think we needed to. No. Getting taller, because we're not going to run monstrously low because we don't need to. Yep it's keeping this arch gap consistent all the way around. And by running just a slightly bigger tire, aesthetically, it looks correct. You know, that nice even gap, you've got good ride. Mm. It kind of ticks all the boxes. Yeah. And PS5 for a change, because generically we've always gone PS4 with as much as we can, or four yeah. S's. Five being the newer tire, it makes some sense at least to let's start running the newer version and play with it and understand how its characteristic is different. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, very, very cool. Yeah. Uh, very cool. So yes, and I love the Mulgari. Um, Sense cap branding. Yeah. Sense cap. Probably the only bit of branding on the car, I think, because the rest of it will be carrying as much podium place branding as we can, as we can squeeze in within reason. Yeah. So I thought that's, that's a nice subtle place to put it. And then this bronze colour, <clears throat> we're going to have that running through the car. It will run through the car subtle places. in a number of places, like we do with most of what we do. When we introduce an accent colour, we try to run it through the car in sensible placement so that it looks cohesive at the end. Yeah. So given that our base colour is not going to change a great deal, maybe just finish. We've got red brakes underneath here, yes, but the factory colour for yep. accent is red with your S branding and what have you. Yep. So rather than following that theme, well, let's take the wheel finish and colour and place that through the car in a couple of other places just so when you look at the car as a whole functioning piece, yep. there's some cohesion running all the way through. Cool. I love that. Yeah. That's good, isn't it? It's pretty. We like them. We like that a lot. Oh, yes. So uh, next thing we're going to have a quick chat about as an update is just behind Darren, we're going to have a chat about exhaust. Yes. Because we've got some sexy bits to look at there and yeah, also the have. supercharger. Yeah. Let's do it. Cool. Oh, shiny now, bits. shiny bits shiny from bits. our good friends at Miltech. <laughs> Legends. Um, oh. So, um, I want us to talk about exhaust, but we're not yes. going to talk about everything because we've no, got no. a bit of a surprise. Yeah. But what I also thought, one of the things about doing this series was there's lots of people watching this will, will kind of, will have done similar things themselves mm -hmm. or will be familiar with modifying cars. Others yeah. will have no idea at all. Yeah. So we're trying to do the kind of uh, education piece without being too Janet and John. Uh, yes. Some of you, I'm sure there'll be stuff we're talking about, a bit like just talking about the numbers on the side of wall of a tire. Yeah, some people will know, some won't. Um, but I thought, let's, so I guess with an exhaust, mm -hmm. stupid point here, but I'm going to go at it right from, so you're going to start off with this bit, because this yeah. is the bit that attaches to the side it's of the engine. Manifold, or you'll hear it referred to as headers. Yep. Depending, that's more of an American term, but effectively, yes, this is your point where your outbound gas yep. enters the exhaust system. At yep. this I'm going to bring it over here so you have a quick heads look. Heads out the back. So we are, uh, we got from Miltech a completely new set of headers. We have. Um, and 
Um, the, now, one of the things, I guess, when you're changing exhaust on a more modern car, mm -hmm. is you'll hear people talking about uh, OPF or GPF yes. filters. Yes. This car doesn't have those, because it's... No, it's well before that. Well before that was invented. Um, I guess I covered this a bit when I put the exhaust on my Porsche. If your car has an OPF stroke GPF filter on it, the car's systems will all be plugged into that, the ECU yes. and so on, for emissions. And Correct. if you remove that, it, yeah. you open up a whole world of hurts, potentially. Yes, you're not only, much like when you removed a catalyst back in the day, so guys will remember in the 90s when exhaust cats came around that it was quite common to throw that away and try and think that you're finding some performance. Mm. Certain cars it works, some cars it doesn't. The OPF GPF system is a, is a further evolution of that. So it's more to do with particulate matter mm -hmm. that that's catching, whereas the cat's the bit actually doing the conversion, if you like, from less to, to a less harmful gas. Mm. If you start removing any of that after treatment system, as it's known, you will inevitably run into warning error lights on the dashboard. The system is designed both to self-monitor, so it knows that it's actually operational and working, mm -hmm. otherwise you get a fault light. Um, but it's also teed in such a way to ensure that if you remove that part of the system, it has a hissy fit and it can be quite difficult to get those lights deleted short of trying to go down the route of tuning and so on. Yeah. And the other thing, uh, on a newer car, if you do remove things like the OPF, you might well run down the warranty issue. Warranty issue, manufacturers get compliance the issue, and of course there's all the, the, the roadside checks and things that are still taking place now for exhaust catalysts and of course they've also moved on now and have caught up with OPF so yeah. as we always like to do with most well everything we build really except the track cars yeah we want them to stay compliant so in the case of these cars with the cats there are solutions sports cats and stuff which we'll cover in a minute mm -hmm. but with the OPF there isn't really a workaround or or an, an upgrade to restore both the noise or the flow functionality yeah. of the system around it it's there to do a job yeah. It kind of needs to stay in place. Yeah. So a lot of systems, like the one I've got in my Porsche, are OPF back. Yes. Um, and, th and then that, I mean, some manufacturers will still get the ump because you're changing the exhaust. But there are some but that understand uh, others, that it's just the network of pipes from the OPF to the back of the car that yep. change the tone or the note or what have you. Don't really find much performance there, really, but it's more about, you know, you take the M cars that I do an awful lot of and the modern day M cars, the most common complaint I have is it doesn't sound like an M car anymore. And, mm. and you know, even with the M performance system on there, they're quite muted. And so there are a big number of aftermarket manufacturers, these guys included, who have solutions to that. Sometimes it's just straight pipe work all the way to the back of the car. Sometimes there's some magic going on in there that actually amplify the sound back closer to what you'd have seen in, a, yeah. in an earlier pre-OPF car. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about OPFs, but we thought it'd be quite interesting just to just have to cover a bit off. of a chat. Yes. What we do have, however, <laughs> yes. is one of these. That is a sports cat. A sports cat. So yeah. here's the thing. So I have a sports cat on my Roadster. Yep. And I know when I bought it, you'll hear the word sports cat. You'll also hear a number and then followed by the word cell. Yes. Probably. Cell. So do you want to have a quick chat about yeah so Let's it's all about I show the, the piece inside the... there people look down inside that hole hopefully you'll see a little grid pattern in there so this will be somewhere around um, 200 dpi or 200 cell yeah cat so effectively each of those holes in there is almost exactly twice as big as its standard counterpart mm -hmm. um, so the factory catalyst the standard catalyst if you will there's a honeycomb set up in there and it is purely its function in life is to capture the gas as it comes through and then the conversion to less noxious or less harmful gases goes on within that brick and comes out the other end it has to slow it down to a certain degree in order for that conversion to take place mm -hmm. um, but of course like anything if you put a restriction in something which is exactly what you do with cat it slows the outbound gas down and so you can give up performance in that area yeah as is so often the case with performance and of course from the motorsport world as well they've been able to use different materials within these cats so they're often metal um, bricks in there now rather than true ceramic and open those gaps up so the conversion happens more quickly because of the precious metals mm -hmm. and it improves the flow so it doesn't restrict like a, a standard cat would so it's still MOT compliant as long as it's hot enough which it will be 
Uh, it will still go through an emissions test, both MOT and roadside. It doesn't sap quite as much sound as a standard one either, so that makes the job of the rear end of the exhaust a bit easier. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, when you're tuning something, you want to find gains in as many places as possible to have a nice rounded product. Yeah. So combined with this nice straight flow, equal length pipe headers, yeah. happy days. Cool. And then there's obviously, we got pipe work from that to the back of the car. Yeah. But we are having a little alteration to ours. It's all in the box, in standard trim. Yeah. And yeah, when we get to the other end, there'll be some changes. We'll explain that later Yeah, we'll on do that road. when we do We're that. We're doing bit. something really cool and unique that's Completely never been done one before. Off. Yeah. So, so that's exhaust. Yes. Janet and John does exhaust. Yeah. Which is good. And then last thing I wanted to talk about, you, we've mentioned this crackle black, and I think on the last video, I showed a component that you've done. Yeah. Um, but this is now the supercharger. So. Yeah. Um, tell us what we've done with that, and it looks awesome. <coughs> now, it looks like it's just come out of like a brand new, brand new box. Yeah. Almost, almost. So, uh, some of the guys and girls with these models may well know that the supercharger has a service interval, mm -hmm. which is a bit of a bind to do when it's on the car because it's pretty much buried. Most of the front of the car's got to come off. It's quite an ordeal. Um, service kits are not expensive. I think they're sort of forty to sixty quid, so not not expensive. It predominantly comprises of oils which go in the chambers at either end um, and seals really and that's pretty much your, your lot um, I've had a really careful look at the Teflon coating on the on the blades in there they're all in really good shape so I'm happy with that mm -hmm. um, so this is a later Teflon coated one again people will know there's a pre and post Teflon version this is the better one it's always a good thing um, so really it's just a freshen up it's had uh, Everything looked at, checked out, bearings and everything else. We know it had not done many miles, but we also know we've had our overheating and stuff, so we wanted mm -hmm. to make sure we'd been through it. Um, having gone through all of that stuff, uh, it made sense to freshen it up like everything else that's going to yeah. be on it. Um, in complete polar opposite to the horn that we showed people last time, that had been through the blast cabinet and all the, all the etch and stuff had been removed. Mm -hmm. You'd be pretty daft to put your supercharger in a, in a blast tank and blast it and fill it with sand. Yeah. So this has been prepped by hand, having been sealed off on all of the openings first uh, in exactly the same way. And then the paint and finish is applied in exactly the same way. So it goes back on nice and fresh. Now, um, question. Um, yes. When you talk about reducing a supercharger pulley, which is quite mm -hmm. a common very common Mod upgrade for these that, that yep. people do for those i thought we might just very briefly talk about that because well, it's here because it's there and you can see there. it yes um i guess a couple of things uh from an auditory point of view that yep. tends to increase the whine it does it makes it more, a little bit harder which, yep. let's face it is so the coolest sound that's in most a pretty sport. cool noise pretty. especially if you own one of these yeah exactly um but it does it make the internal spin quicker and reduce yes. uh, increase the pressure Absolutely, 100% that. So yeah. it's, it's, I referred to it previously as gearing is, is another way to think about it. So if you're on a bicycle and you start changing gears, mm -hmm. depending on which is your driving and which is your driven piece, depending on which way around your gearing goes, mm -hmm. you can have to work harder to turn, but you're turning at a much quicker rate. Yeah. So much like this, um, this is a smaller pulley. So in effect, for the same rotation of the crankshaft, this is turning a little bit faster. Yeah. It makes all the internals spin faster, so effectively you are getting more pressure. Um, with a supercharger, it's slightly different to a turbo. It, 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 it takes away energy to produce the pressurized air, of course. Yeah. So by gearing down at this end, you are asking the engine to turn harder to produce more air. Yeah. Of course you are. But the beauty of it is that you get so much more air, of course it overcomes that quite quickly. Yeah. Um, it means everything inside there is spinning a bit quicker as well, but it's, it's relative. It's very, very small, really. We're talking a couple of percent here and there. They're not monstrous. Mm. And we are having the counter. <laughs> We're having a slightly different crankshaft pulley as well to get the gearing. So we end up with the same rotational speed here, but take the load off the engine. It's okay. another little trick. Uh, okay. And again, think of it much like your bicycle. Yeah. You can get the same output revolution yeah. for less effort on the front end by the driven gear at the front being changed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, um, yeah. that is where we are. There is like, that, so we were chatting off camera, there's a whole bunch of components that are ready to go on the car. And most of it's here or it's in storage, stocked up, piled up, yeah. ready to go on. It's, it's pulling them out in the right order yeah. and assembling them where we need them, but also being mindful of our 
<laughs> other yeah, commitments yeah, and true. being able to find time to not just have it 90% built and then go, yeah. ta-da. Although, to be honest, we have got a, we've got a, a delivery date that we want to try and achieve yeah, for the clients. Yeah, we really so want to make we, sure we, that we get it back yeah. rather than dragging it out matter. too much further. <laughs> um, so next few things, obviously all of this can go in the front end and we get the engine in. The yep. really exciting stuff and maybe one of the next things we start to think about from the episode point of view yep. is inside the car inside the car and some the, maybe some of the, the interior is stuff. going to be really really exciting yeah um exterior color we haven't really let to we're going to pretty much keep this color but do something cool yes, to it we are. um and then we've got all these kind of nice design touches with the bronze yeah from the a wheels couple of little pieces here now, and there so. to carry our color through yeah so there you go there is an update it is an update <laughs> of some kind exactly so i'm now going to go and let him get on with it because i always slow him down when i come and do filming but put in the comments any questions you have on the build or any of the things we put on or anything we missed or anything we've missed and what we what we are going to do towards the end of the build is we'll put out a complete um, yeah there'll be a full list of all spec. the stuff that we've put all on it and prices and all that yeah kind of pricing stuff. places to go and find stuff if you're yeah. unsure where to find yeah. them we just need to compile that because it's yeah. going to be quite a big list to be it'll honest. be a fair old list yeah yeah like good bedtime uh, um, but if you enjoyed that give me a thumbs up comments below are always welcome and if you haven't done so already please subscribe to petrol Pet for plenty more content to come before we go i would like to say thank you very much to michelin uk and to yep. miltech for supporting project pp thank uh, you guys. epic guys and uh, we'll see you on the next episode we Darren, will you're a legend mate and you Ha, ha, ha.